Erste Block. Hi everybody, it's Wednesday. Uh, I've been out in the garden a few hours now. Uh, I've just had a delivery of coal for the coming winter months, so I've just been sorting that out. I've also uh, mucked the bed for the onions, which I've purchased. I've been back down to Wilkinson's, and probably a lot of you see on the Facebook page. Um, I've been down to Wilkinson's the past couple of times and getting some, some seeds that I had on sale. So I've got my two bags here. I've got my garlic, I've got my winter sets of red and white onions as well. So the bed has been prepped with pigeon, pigeon manure. Um, not fresh, it's been it, it, it's been sat a little while but it's dry as well. I've just laid that over the top and I'll get ready to dig that in. Then once that's settled down, I've put me put me in say my onions in, probably at the end of the month, same time I do with the garlic. Speaking of garlic, I have actually put my garlic, my elephant garlic in, the big no, if don't if you can remember, they were just one big bulbous. It took a little bit longer for the elephant garlic to germinate last year, so I've started it off a bit earlier this year, a few weeks before I put my normal garlic straight direct on the ground. Um, I will do an experiment this year. I'll put half in pots to start it off, and I'll put the rest in the ground direct, and we'll see at the end of the season which ones come out best. Um, so at the moment, what I'm doing is I've bought a new handy little tool, which I haven't got in here, or uh, half here. So I've been to the pound shop, and I found this little clip with these little hand shears. So what I've done is the lavender, I've taken the tops of the lavender off, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to, how to uh, propagate soft soft wood cuttings and i'll explain the difference between hard wood and soft wood cuttings for you so i'm just going to get you from there pop you on this corner and i'll talk you through it all right so see you on this side you can't see me face but what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you is now where what to do with to be able to propagate soft wood cuttings from the lavender it's pretty much the same process uh, as when you're doing any any propagation so you get your you get your compost so i've got a big pot here you take, you snip the tops off, all I've done is snip the tops off. So you can see there, snip the tops of the lavender off. Now all I'm going to do from there, is just remove the lower leaves till there's only three on. Okay, so just remove those like such, till we get to the top. And we'll get to that section there, so it looks a bit like that. Then where you can see a leaf node, what I'm going to do, so I'm going to get my sharp knife, which I don't have, but what I'm going to do, uh, what other thing I'm going to use is my deadhead and scissors. I'm just going to snip at an angle, just below the leaf node, and then just stick that into the corner of the pot, just like that. So, I'm going to get cracked on with these, I've got a few to do, and let's see if I can propagate a lot of lavender for next year from these cuttings. It's a shame to from them to go to waste, so let's see. It's an experiment. I don't know if I should be doing it this time of the year or not, but I'm doing it in any case to see if I can uh, make some more free plants, because we all love free plants. So, I'll show you the afters, okay? So let me just get my pot together, and I'll show you the magic trick of editing. So, are you ready? Snap of the fingers. So, there we have it. Um, I've got them propagated in here now, so I've not just got all of these three, I've managed to get another one done as well. So all together, let me just have a quick count. There's 60 all together. So there's 60 cuttings taken there for propagation. I'll leave them in here because it's still quite warm, but when it starts getting cooler, I'll move them either into the smaller greenhouse or into the greenhouse at home. So I'm going to stick these into the tray at the back so that the water I can take up. I'm also going to mist over the top as well because you need to be wary of the foliage as well. Um, so hopefully in a couple of weeks time um, these will start rooting and I'll start potting them on further from here. So I'm going to see what else I can get on with. Um, there's a few things that need potting on. For example, these need potting on. These are just the cuttings that I took from the chrysanthemums that basically these have fallen off. The chrysanthemums from outside um, and I just stuck them in some soil. I don't know what to do with them but at the moment you can see the roots on there, mental roots on them. Just put them in. Don't know what, what to do with them after this but uh, if you're going to suggest them with them, I mean, like I say I'm going to try and see if I can keep them going um, for, for more stools um, for next year. If not, then I'll just stick them outside, they'll be late flowering. If they, if they survive, they survive. If they don't, they don't. I've not lost anything. There's only thing only to gain. So, 
I'm going to crack on and get that something else done now. Hello, happy Thursday. So I'm down at the allotment with Kyle. Um, we've been down here for, wait, Kyle's just arrived 10, 15 minutes ago. I've been down here for a couple of hours now. What I've done is I'm actually in the next door garden. So I've emptied the carrot beds because they were full of weeds. I'll show you that in a second. I've also um, riddled the soil and put it all in one bed because um, the other side I'm gonna fill with sand um, for to grow some carrots next year. I've also started de-weeding the, the side as well with the, the flowers. So I'll spin you around and I'll show you what I'm getting to and show you what I'm doing with regards to the buckets that's already in there. But I'll show you them now. Apologies about the wind. So what I've managed to get so far is the, the carrots that Elizabeth put in, they were very late. These are the all that's are left. So they're all that's left. I know he's had good carrots over this, these beds in the past couple of, couple of years. So these beds here, Two seconds soon, we'll do that, we'll do, we'll do it next door, watch the way. So in here, what I've done is I've just so stuck this on. So I've riddled the soil, I've pulled all the weeds out, and I've riddled this as well. So as you can see, this is all, all the soil is from there and in here. So I'll get some more to put in here just to fill it up a bit, because the carrots were a bit short and as soon as they got to the bottom, you can see with this one, it stopped and split. So this one here is empty. I'll just lift it up and show you. So that's empty. Just the base of the ground where it's hard. So carrots is going in here. Next year, stump carrots. I've de-weeded up this section here where the onions are. I'll show you them onions in a second. Um, I've also started pulling out all of these buckets here. I'll tell you about them in a second. I've pulled out all of them leaks down here that I just shot, shoot it. So all of that, all now clear. So I'm making steady progress on to get the rest of this cell sorted out as well. These cabbages are no good apart from the red ones because they've still got a hard on because the cabbage has left them as well. But I know how to net them better next year. So, flower section. So what I did was, I started here, I've de-weeded it all, and I've gotten to where that orange bucket is there, full of weeds. So I've gotten them about there. I'm calling that for the day, because my knees are starting to hurt. But I've still got all the rest of it to do down the bottom there, and obviously across that section there. But uh, Ronnie was telling us, these buckets here had spring flowers in, spring bulbs, and all it does is just take them out and put them in, into them holes. So we've got the bucket, just takes them in there, easy enough to pull them in and out again. So I've pulled all of the buckets up to, to there and I'm going to empty them all out and see what bulbs are in there, see if we can reuse them. But I'm going to go and buy some more spring bulbs like the daffodils and the crocus and things like that. I'm going to buy some more. So I'm going to get that sorted out as well. I also spotted this little thing here as well which is actually full of compost. It's soft compost. So carrots will grow in here. But what I'm thinking is, next year, I'm thinking of growing a giant carrot in there. Fill it up a bit, grow a giant carrot in there, and see what happens. But, it's all these plans are coming together slowly but surely. But, at the time being, I'm going to um, pour all these out and see what goodies I can find in here with the bulbs. Well, I've got visitors. Little Kyle's been, and I've got Leslie, Sky, and Elizabeth here as well. There's Sky. <laughs> Um, I've had a delivery this morning. Um, thank you, Rodney, for them seeds. I'll show you what I've getting off Rodney. It's ten seeds in each, and it's tomato seeds that he's managed to do from this year. And he's given us a handy little little fact sheet as well. So we've got uh, I'm not even going to pronounce these. I've got banana legs, pink ox heart, and that one. Might be backwards. I don't know. Azayachka, <laughs> Azayachka. Uh, I'm going to have a read through of these, see what they like. Might grow just one or two for next year because I'm not going to have that much space for the tomatoes. Um, so thank you very much for those, Rodney. They've arrived safe and well. When we were uh, Beamish last week as well, uh, with a bit of recycling, I picked this out. I've cleaned it out. And what I've done is I've just put hide all the seeds I've gotten from Milkos in there as well. But that's pretty much it. I've... Uh, just to see what a crack for the next couple of years. I did like the shape of this onion. It was a smaller one. 
but for the shape of it I did like it so what I've done is I'm putting it back for seed now I don't know if I put it in the too small of a pot but I, I might just put it in a bit of a bigger pot it shouldn't really need much um but you I've done that I need a good root system on for the uh, for the seed head but other than that not really done much I'm gonna go and pick some dailies to take home then we're all gonna go and head home now as well so I'm saying goodbye for today. It's an early start tomorrow as I drive down to Harrogate. So I'll see everybody down at the Harrogate show and I'll uh, take me, of course, take my phone as well for Bye. the camera. And uh, we'll show, I'll show you a few things down there. I'll probably be recording a lot, so I'll probably just bring everything down. Um, just to keep, keep it all short and things for you. So, see you down Harrogate tomorrow. Bye. Good morning, everybody. So, it is now Friday morning. Uh, I've just come down to Harrogate. I'm sat parked up just because I'm uh, meeting Mark and Gary, Geordie Giant Veg and Mark from Mark's Allotment Diaries. I'm meeting up with them. Um, so we'll head to the show with them today. Um, heading down heading to Harrogate, Flower and Veg Show. Biggest show in the north, which I've travelled two hours south to get to. So I'll let you work that one out. But just kept waiting for these guys to come down. And we'll head over to the show and I'll do a few videos from the, from the show itself and uh, you can have a look around and we'll, I'll show you the onions and leeks and all of that bit different things there as well looking forward to it I've got a full day today to get looked around so try my best to capture as much as possible if I don't then I'll take as many pictures as possible and pop them on my Facebook page but I'll see you once these guys come down I'll see you over at the show hello right we're down at the Harrogate show, behind the scenes footage. Um, Mox managed to win Heavy's League and we're down at the, the, the back, back at the minute. And uh, we've got press Gary's area. here, press area. Here's Gary, Charlie Giant Veg. We've got Ian Neal standing on a chair there. There's something you'll not see very often. He's getting his photo done with his cabbage there as well. <laughs> it's been such a laugh so far, but I'm going to take his inside and show you everything else inside as well with the giants and things. So I'll see his back inside. So what they've got here is the place, uh, these are the heavy onions, what they do is they place a little device over the top and they cut across the top just so that everything is exactly the same height. So they remove the, the top section of the, the leaves, they'll place the cap over the top and they'll cut it just so everybody's got the same height of onion um, for the heavy weight. Now this is the reason why some people like having the long necks because there might be more weight in the neck as well. So it was quite very, it was very interesting for what they do on here and uh, a little bit more learned about the heavy onions themselves. So what they're doing now is they're weighing Nick Brake's heavy onion, which I think is going to win this. But let's see what they, see what they say. Well done Nick, that's absolutely fantastic. Just over 17 pounds for the onion. That's an amazing achievement. So, what we have here is they have the heaviest onions. Third place went to Peter Glazebrook and his onion was a nice tall neck onion. Um, like I was mentioned before, regards of the weight in the neck. We'll go on to second place, which was won by S. Purvis. Another nice little round fat onion. Um, did really well with this as well in first place we've got nick break now great achievement this for his first year grown just under 18 pounds in weight absolutely fantastic well done nick again for winning the heaviest onion yeah are the exhibition onions we've got five on this side and the three are on the other so these are i'll be growing a lot of these come next year um these are the the, the the creme de la creme basically this one here especially this one that came first fantastic seeds here fantastic plants here by peter holden and his uh, second place i believe is here as well um so like i say i'll be i'll be growing a few of these next year but these are the the quality that they need to be at in the main shows themselves and here i've got the you got the three so this is probably be a category i want to enter next year all go going well and you can see here, the people get their own crosses and their own mixtures um, for the seed, for the seeds for the leaf, for the onion. Sorry, um, but yeah, this is where 
I want to be next year. I want to be shown on this bench with these, with the big boys. So we'll see what happens next year. And here we have the pot of chilies. Um, this is a category I can happily enter next year. I've got some some good chili plants. I might give them, definitely give them another go next year. There's different varieties here. You can see the pat patio sizzle there, which I've got, and the ones at the back there, which you'll recognise because they look exactly the same as the ones that I thought were long spag in my greenhouse. So I look forward to see. I need to see what what variety they are. So I think I'll go around the corner and I'll. Uh, see if I can find out what variety they are but these these chilies here there's different varieties nice little plants um so uh, let's see what they are but uh, let's see what see what these are here it's a nice big plant it's just like mine it's, I've got a few of these as you already see and the name of these are there we go they're Joe Long Joe's Long Chili so that's the variety found what they are so definitely be growing them again next year because they're a good chili these are the Blanche Leaks, the, the category is three, three Blanche Leaks. This is third prize, Pendel Improved. And these are the type of ones I've tried to do this year, but of course they weren't, they weren't very good whatsoever. But these ones here are second prize. These are nice ones as well, nice and uniform. Not my cup of tea with regards to the Blanche Leaks, I do like the Pot Leaks better. And this is the first place for the MVS Pendel Improved. Lovely shape and they're nice and clean as well. These are the stump carrots and long carrots, three of each. These were really nice carrots as well. The long ones were nice as well. And the long ones I'm going to give a go this year as well as also the short ones. So you can see a different, there's different, different varieties here as well for the same categories, which is quite cool. So anything, I could, anything looking anywhere near as good as these next year, I'll be here with them all. So see what happens come the end of next year, see what I can get in. And on to the giant vegetable classes. So here you can see the marrows. Now on the left hand side you'll see the novice section. And on the right hand side is the standard section. And so the ones on the left here, uh, not including this one here, these are the novice section which uh, Gary Cooper came second in. He's very proud of that. There's some, there were some big ones, really big ones. I'm going to see if I can get one in for next year as well. So that's another thing I'll be looking at getting done. I've already got a plan of where I want to put my marrow. You've got the giant tomatoes here as well. And I'll show you the long runners. These are the long runners. Moving on to the big marrows again. Now, these are absolutely huge. That'll be trailered in. Sorry, give us a second. So there's the runner beans there, like I was mentioning before. Sorry, just skipped over the, the other marrows there. Couldn't really get in. So, yep, these are the long runners. Now, these are really long. They are, I mean, the, I think the world record was 30, 33 or something. Now, I can't remember. But these are about the length of the arm. Where you can see there on this, on the labels there, 29 inches, 23 inches, 33 and a half inches. They're really long, really long. Runner beans, not really my cup of tea, but it's nice to see how long it can actually get. Moving on here to the cucumbers, so the giant cucumbers, the longest one here in the middle here. Now these are grown in guttering as well, I think. Um, but yeah, they're really, really long and they were really big in person as well. Moving on to rhubarb. Now I'll be quite honest, I'm sure I've got a piece of rhubarb that's heavier than that. It's the heaviest rhubarb. I'm sure I've, I've pulled off bigger rhubarb than that, but with it being the end of the season, you can see the size of it there next to my hand. But see what happens, I've got a nice big rhubarb plant next door. And on to the heavy leeks. Now this is Mark Shepard's heavy leek, which he won the class with. Now this was massive. It was a really big, really big heavy leek. He's over the moon with it. Um, and the rest of them on here as well. Gary did come somewhere in here, but I can't remember if it was third or fifth. But it's, uh, it's scary to think that the, the, the guys have got even bigger, heavier leaks ready to go for the Malvern event. So I'll be looking forward to seeing how they come with them as well. And there's third prize there as well. 6.2 kilograms. Massive, huge, huge leaks. There's fifth prize, a bit like Glaze Brooks. Attempt. The giant carrots. Now these are some fugly things. I'll say fugly because they're freaky and ugly all at the same time. That one's the winner there by uh, Ian Neal as you seen outside earlier on 
celebrating with his giant cabbage, his success in giant cabbage as well. Onto the heavy parsnips. Same as the, the carrots, they're pretty fugly. <laughs> Intertwined with other carrots, and that's what, pretty much what you look for. There's first prize there. Couldn't remember who who, who won the fired first prize for it. But uh, it, it's just strange to see them. And these things here, yeah, these are beetroot. They're absolutely ginormous. Once again, it was uh, Ian Neal who won the heaviest. And yeah, it was, there it is there. It's absolutely massive. Huge. Now, there's the, there's the standard ones. There's the, well, it's just standard. It's not really standard. They're really big. But Ian's just twice the size. Huge. Heavy tomatoes. Biggest tomatoes. Um, was won by Peter Glazebrook. The one in the, the back right there. There, once again, there's been some, some nice size tomatoes there. It's not something I don't think I'd give a go, but like, never say never. And there's the first prize there. And next to these tomatoes are the heavy potatoes. So there's a recognisable name there, Dan Unsworth. He just does, he does the onions as well from a lot of diaries. And they're the, the heaviest onions there. You've got obviously different varieties and things as well. Which apologies, I've gone over very quickly so we can't really see what they are. Lots of video, little time. Move on to the heavy cabbage, the giant cabbage. Now this was third prize for the heaviest cabbage. You can't quite get the aspect of how big they were unless you were there in person. First prize there to go to E. Neil again. So very well done for that. Try to put my hand in here sometime, try to get my hand in just to see, show you how big it is, but uh, couldn't get it in. Um, there's another another big one as well, but it looks like it started to split on the inside, so you can see there. But absolutely giant, giant cabbages, you'd make a massive soup with that, massive broth of them. Cabbage soup for months, feed a whole village on that. And I tried this year and failed miserably, but I'm always willing to give it a go again next year. On to the pumpkins. I'm starting off from the one of the smaller ones. I say smaller. It's once again these are great attempts. They they are really big pumpkins. And this one here was made by the Forest School, North Right and Sea Primary. So these were just the, these were children's entries. Fantastic effort for the kids to get involved as well. Moving on to the the bigger the bigger pumpkins. Now I say bigger pumpkins because there's one that gets even bigger. This was fourth prize. Absolutely huge, huge. These have got to be shipped in on forklift trucks. They're that big. And that was second prize there. So very well done. Get some, get some weird shapes as well. And a lot of people losing their stuff as well. Due to splits and, and other things. I mean, I think Marrows is the only, weird, the only giant things I'm going to be going on finding a vine plant next year. Pumpkins, I mean, they, they all take a lot of care. So I don't want to be stretching myself too thin with the rest of the things that I'll be growing next year. Focus on a few small things and the rest of the veg in the garden. But there we go. That's the biggest one there. Now that was absolutely humongous. It was massive. It was nice and I dare not touch it because you're not supposed to touch them. But first prize there. So very well done to you who won that. Right, we're going to move on to some flowers now. So we'll see what I can see when I turn around here. So we've got some gladiola display here, some beautiful colours with a gladiola, gladioli, depending on how you want to pronounce them. Now these are, I do like these, and I have like the, I do like the ones that I've got in the garden growing already. Now I will be getting some from Malvin, so look out for them growing next year. Definitely, I'll, I'll have a go with them next year, even just for the house. And on to the dahlias. So this is the dahlia stand. Now I will show you some other dahlias later on from the championship classes and the national classes. But this is just a stand for the, I think it was a nursery at the time. So there's some beautiful colours in these. I really do like the colours of the dahlias. Moving on. And these are the lilies. Now my lilies were finished months ago, uh, about a month ago. To have these is great. I think this is another nursery. The, they're absolutely lovely. The smell was absolutely phenomenal as well. Lots of time and lots of effort went into these. So I'll definitely be growing some more lilies next year. Again. These 
like I say, that, to be quite honest, they look lovely for the colours they've got, but the ones I've got, the deep red ones, I think they just look outstanding, the deep red ones that I've got. Anyhow, I'm going to head over to the dahlias now. So, the dahlia section, there's a large amount of dahlias here, so I'm just going to, I'm sorry that the fact that I'm going through these pretty quickly. My phone was about to die, so I'll try to get as much content as I could. There's lots of different varieties, lots of different shapes, sizes. These are cactus varieties, you can, as you probably already know. I've told this a few times. The, the quality of them are absolutely fantastic. We've got different varieties going all the way from here. We've got the small pom-poms, we've got the medium pom-poms. I don't know the actual names of them, but these are what I know them as. So, moving on down. Like I say, there's some lovely colours with the dailies. I love these reds against the yellows as well, they're really nice. These ones here, sorry, it's just people in the way at the minute, I'm trying to get them out with the video. Um, there's all sorts of these, you already know, there's loads of different varieties and different dahlias available. And these ones here, I love these red ones. The colour is so vibrant, it's that vibrant, you can't even get it in the recording itself. Even when I try to focus on in uh, the contrast as well. These, just try to squeeze past here. Just move over here. Now these little pom poms here, you'll see. On, well, not this side. This side we have the the smaller variety, and there's some pom poms in there as well. The colours are just amazing. Just looking through them, and to the other side as well. Just a burst of colour all over the place. They're really nice. And the quality of them, once again, are really nice as well. I mean, these, a lot of these will be grown undercover. Um, and they well looked after as well. I mean, you've got to stop them at certain times. You've got to get the, the timings right for the shows. A lot of these, a lot of time and efforts went into these. Whereas mine are just for the house, really. And you've seen what mine are like. Sometimes you get water damage on the back and things like that. If you're going to do something, you may as well do it properly. But these were, a lot of these were done properly. So this is the this is the level where the top top growers are at. Maybe it's one day. We'll see what happens. Might do a year of just dahlias. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Can we just do a year of something? These are lovely. It's totally different. You get all sorts of different varieties of dahlias as well. It's great. You can get lily dahlias and all sorts. These ones are the giant head ones. Now when I say giant, I mean giant. They're huge. They're about the same size as your head. And the displays on them and the colours on them are lovely. There you are, the size from your hand. It's huge. And every single one of these will be will be uh, well looked after. Onto the chrysanthemums. So these are in curves and quite nice the other ones as well, but I can't remember what they're re curve I think they are as well. But some uh, once again lovely colours. It's like a like a colourful ball of uh, cotton wool. Like I said, like once again, a lot of time, a lot of effort goes into these to keep them keep them nice and clean, keep them bug free. But yeah, I actually got to go through them all and make sure that all the leaves are in the right place with the pin. There's a lot of lot of time, a lot of effort goes into them as I already mentioned. And some of the colours on them are lovely as well. I mean, I've got some, I've got some. Um, in the garden, as you already know, we got off uh, John Peace, who's who's uh, cat who's here actually. This is his section, yeah. And he got uh, we got the best vase of in curve. That's them ones. And these ones as well. As you can see, that was some beautiful, They're lovely, lovely croissants. And that's me done for this year. So, back to the car. Well, I'm back in the car now. That's me done for Harrogate. Uh, I've taken the videos where I can. Uh, my phone's probably die, so uh, I couldn't get everything. And to be honest, if I did get everything, it would be absolutely hours worth of footage. So I'm gonna, when I get home, I'm gonna uh, get my editing stuff sorted out for the video. Um, I'll also show you now what I've picked up. I couldn't resist, so I picked some more tulips up. No, two pound fifty each. So I picked some of them ones up just because they look nice. I put them in a pot. But these are the ones that I picked up because little red riding hood. So little Elizabeth, that's her nickname. 
So I couldn't resist not picking them up for her. So I picked her a pack of them tulips up as well. I've also picked up some uh, Fritataria, I think they're called. And check out the size of them bulbs. Huge them. So I've picked the mixture of three up. I've got red, uh, orange, red and uh, different colour as well, which I did take a picture of. But I've, uh, I'm forgetting what the other colour is, so I've got a mixture of those. But that is, let's say, me doing. I've got a two hour drive home now. But I've had a very good day. Met a lot of new people. A lot of people who I recognise from online and also um, from giant veg shows and things like that. Um, well done, Gary and Mark as well. Um, especially Mark for his leak. Heaviest leak, won it, and uh, Gary for beating Mark and his onions. <laughs> but uh, I, I look for, look forward, hopefully I, um, next year I can, I can bench my own stuff. So look forward to that. Got plenty of things to do uh, to get to that stage. I mean, well, I mean, another thing as well, well done, Nick Nick Break as well. Winning the, uh, the, the giant onion, heaviest onion. Absolutely fantastic achievement, over 17 pounds. For weight and onion, that's absolutely amazing. That I'll be happy with it. Just seven. That's my target next year. If I get over seven, I'll be happy. Then we'll just go on from there. Um, but yep, that's me done for today. That's me done for right, not be for this week, but for this video itself. And anyways, um, I've got to go back to Beamish again um, on Sunday as Sky wants to enter the another little the little show they've got on for cooking. So she's going to make some butterfly cakes and things, and she's going to get involved with that. So the kids are getting involved with the shows as well, not just flowers, neither. But, yep, yeah, that is me done. It's an experience. I'm pleased I, I came. Many thanks to Mark for Mark's Lockman Diary, and also Gary, Jolly Giant Veg, for showing us around. And say everything else, but just changing my shoes yet, yeah, because I've got a two-hour drive. So... Thank you very much for watching and um, thank everybody for subscribing as well and uh, if you want to pop a comment down below as well that would be fantastic, I'll, uh, I'll get back to you. Another mention as well, Rob Holmes, nice meeting you pal, you were saying some lovely things about you Chris Pugh, lovely things. Just, you just warn us what I expect from you that's all, which I gathered anyways. <laughs> right, I'm going home so see you. Possibly on Sunday, I might upload a little video on Sunday. So, thanks very much. Bye-bye now.